Good afternoon. Welcome to today's media availability with Mayor Don Eisen and City Manager Andre Corbold. The Mayor and City Manager will speak about today's Emergency Advisory Committee meeting and then take questions. We'll start with Mayor Eisen. Thanks, Chris, and uh, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, City Council received an update, update from our COVID-19 task team on the city's ongoing response to the pandemic. As the city manager mentioned there, uh, Edmontonians in the city of Edmonton must continue to strike the right balance between taking advantage of the easing up of restrictions and remaining cautious and vigilant against COVID-19 and its variants. I want to stress that the city cares deeply about ensuring that we're doing our part to keep Edmontonians safe during this cautious reopening. And we know how fatigued Edmontonians are. If you're like me, the polar vortex of the last couple of weeks has tested our patients and even our mental health. But we understand how much stress businesses are under right now too. But we must also, uh, and we also know how much stress our healthcare system is still under and how easily it could yet be overwhelmed given the new variant's contagiousness. So we certainly don't want to throw away the gains that our considerable sacrifices have made to her, which is why I appreciate how administration has approached the reopening of selected arenas, fitness, sport, and aquatic facilities, and Andre will get more into the specifics here in a minute. But we heard about the increased accommodation for our city's most vulnerable as well, and I want to recognize and acknowledge the work and leadership of our many colleagues in the numerous agencies uh, who are working on the front lines to ensure that those in need are taken care of with compassion and with understanding, particularly during this bout of cold. Now, I'd stress that what was presented to Council this afternoon, uh, that we remain in a vulnerable place because of the uncertain situation that the new variants put us in and because we're still waiting for most Edmontonians to get access to the vaccine. So we must remain guarded and continue to diligently follow public health directives. Recent video footage of patrons spreading on social media, essentially partying in restaurants this week is worrisome. This virus is not a joke. It is not a hoax. Edmontonians have died, far too many already. And it is heartless and it is cruel to treat their deaths and the sacrifices of Edmontonians who have diligently followed public health orders to do their part to protect our health care system as if they mean nothing by flouting these important rules that are here for our safety. After all, we have seen the dire consequences of government's inaction and delayed response out there and around the world, and we don't want to relive that here. And that's why I appreciate today's update on how the city will be handling enforcement as more businesses and services open up, including restaurants and bars. And as those businesses reopen or consider reopening, I also appreciated hearing that city administration was committed to reviewing some of the regulatory measures and licensing fees, some of the other um, things the city oversees with respect to business regulation uh, and working jointly with provincial authorities uh, to look at anything further that we can do to support businesses in 2021 here, given all of the challenges that they're facing. That said, businesses by and large are doing an exceptional job of keeping their patrons and their employees safe. And overall, in, in public, where we're out amongst each other, compliance rates with public health measures, including masking, remain very high. Edmontonians are overwhelmingly doing their part to keep themselves and our community safe, and to them I say thank you. I also want to offer my deep appreciation to the very responsible leaders in the faith community here in Edmonton. In no uncertain terms, they have declared this week their collective solidarity through reinforcing a call for social cohesion and reminding their members to follow public health orders. And while recognizing the need for some degree of sacrifice of self and of freedom, faith leaders have encouraged their congregations to draw inspiration and strength from their higher source and from this community resolve. Now the city also wants to ensure that we're doing our part to protect, again, all of our hard fought gains against the virus, which is why the city has significantly increased the frequency of patrols and the number of warnings and tickets issued across many different categories of public activity. Now, unfortunately, as we discussed today, there will always be a reckless few who refuse to take this pandemic seriously and the life and death stakes that we're dealing with. 
but I want Edmontonians to know that your city is working with provincial officials to remind the public about public health protocols and enforcement with refreshed communication, working with the province to address concerns around compliance and working with the province to take the public health complaints that come into both governments very, very seriously. We are doing our best to be transparent about education and enforcement efforts via our public facing dashboard on the City of Edmonton's website. Now finally, I also appreciated uh, the new theme that emerged much more strongly in our discussion today under Andre's leadership, which is the, the focus on recovery. Because we could all use some hope knowing that this will pass eventually and it'll pass sooner as we work together. So our recovery from this pandemic is a topic that's been top of mind for all of us, especially this week as I meet with federal leaders um, and uh, cabinet members to discuss the upcoming federal budget and uh, big cities vision for Canada's economic recovery alongside uh, my colleagues around the big city mayor's table. And we emphasize that cities are key partners in Canada's pandemic response and recovery and municipalities remain on the front lines of Canada's response to our pandemic, which we hear, you know, very comfortable reassurance and, uh, and understanding from uh, federal leaders from all political stripes that they really do understand the work that frontline uh, Canadians uh, in our local governments are doing on their behalf. So as we start planning for recovery, we're also acutely aware that this is a critical window for our federal partners to tackle urgent pandemic challenges, like our need to address homelessness and other inequities that this pandemic has only exacerbated. But this is also the time to work together to tool up for a strong and inclusive recovery because we don't just want to build back, we do want to build back in a more resilient, sustainable and inclusive way than we had um, been configured before this pandemic hit us. Which is why I was up at the crack of dawn on our time zone, actually well before the sun came up, uh, on behalf of Canada's big city mayors to join the Prime Minister for his landmark announcement today of major new long-term investment in public transit. This investment will create much needed jobs to aid in our COVID-19 recovery while helping to meet our shared climate goals and the mobility demands of Edmontonians as we grow and unlock new investment opportunities for transit-oriented development very consistent with the city plan. Now, as Andre had outlined, the city administration has uh, already begun work on uh, recovery from COVID and so that when the time uh, is right, we're in a very good position to kickstart growth and city building opportunities here in Edmonton. So now I'll pass it over to Andre. Thank you very much, Mayor Iveson. Good afternoon. Today's Emergency Advisory Committee of Council included an update on the pandemic and provided an overview of the strategic approach we are applying for the recovery plan. With the province's recent easing of restrictions on public health measures, the city will begin a stepped approach to reactivating some indoor sports and training opportunities. Effective tomorrow, February 11th, we will begin accommodating school groups, sport organizations, and some children's support, sport and performance activities. Five arenas will reopen first to host groups. They are Twilliger Four Pad Arena, the Collingwood Twin Arena, the Castle Downs Twin Arena, the Meadows Twin Arena, and the Kinsman Twin Arena. The Kinsman Sports Center will also reopen for schools and organizations to use for dry land sport training and aquatic services. Two additional arenas may reopen on February 16th, depending on demand, and they are the Clairview Twin Arena and the Mill Woods Tw Twin Arena. As well, the St. Fran Francis Xavier Sports Center may reopen to meet additional demand for dry land sports training. While recreation centers and attractions will not open for the general public's use as part of the step one plan, we continue to prepare for additional opportunities that emerge from the government of, government of Alberta's path forward plan. We want to remind all users of these facilities that physical distancing, masking and gathering limits are still in effect. We recommend that Edmontonians visit edmonton.ca slash rec centers to learn more about the details of facility reopenings. We know that the recreation opportunities provided people of all ages the chance to exercise their body and their mind. These past few months have been partic particularly difficult for school-aged children who have craved the enjoyment, creativity and achievement associated with playing sport. We welcome the parents and guardians, coaches, trainers and aspiring athletes 
who are anxious to resume or start their passion for movement and play. For the past year, administration has been laser focused on responding to the immediate challenges presented by the pandemic. Broad vaccine rollout of the, to the public is slated for later this year, and that will trigger expectations for what Edmonton's new normal will look and what, what it will feel like. Now is the time to bring attention to the city's plan designed to kickstart our public health and economic recovery. There will be a clear advantage for organizations that make, make strategic shifts to pandemic recovery early and decisively. We intend to be ready to go when the time is right, and today we shared with Council some criteria that underpin our recovery plan, along with the triggers that will signal our readiness to proceed. Collaboration is key to our recovery, and we'll be asking Council to weigh in on our plan and let us know what they need to see in their wards to, be re to rebuild vibrancy and community spirit across the city. We will back, be back to the Emergency Advisory Committee with anticipated timelines and more detailed information, but today's discussion was a great start and really set the stage for that strategic planning for our future recovery. Thank you. Thank you, City Manager. Next, we'll take questions from the five media outlets joining us today. Uh, each media outlet can ask one question and a follow-up. The Mayor is only available for the first round of questions. If you have any additional questions, the City Manager will be here to answer those. We'll start with uh, Jackson Spring from Taproot. Do you have a question for us today, Jackson? Hi there. Uh, yeah, I have a question for uh, the Mayor. Um, Mr. Mayor, I was wondering if you could share any opinions you might have on recreation centers opening tomorrow. Uh, and I guess I'm referencing some comments you made on February 1st saying it was um, more or less not a great idea. Thanks. Well, um, there is demand from the user groups uh, and with the right measures in place, uh, particularly with children who are uh, in programs at schools already and old enough to, uh, to adhere to uh, the right rules um, that on a, on a very limited basis uh, and with the, with the clear advice from the government of Alberta and public health officials that it can be done safely, uh, I'd rather the city uh, open and provide those opportunities um, I think the, uh, the, the concerns and hesitation that I expressed a couple of weeks ago is more around uh, the restaurants and bars piece than the recreation piece, to be honest with you. And uh, what we saw on social media from the other day is, is a bit reflective of that. So um, I'm confident that the city, uh, that our city officials would not be reopening uh, facilities in a way that creates a risk to public health or to our employees. Uh, or to our patrons, and that uh, all the right measures and mitigations will be in place for the limited opening uh, that, uh, that is made possible at this stage. Jackson, do you have a follow-up question? Uh, I don't have a follow-up, thank you. Okay, thanks, Jackson. Uh, next, we'll go to Dustin Cook from Post Media. Dustin? Thank you very much. My question uh, is for Andre. Andre, I know, um, you might not have the numbers at hand, but will this, uh, the opening of arenas impact uh, layoffs, temporary layoffs of city employees and will some be coming back to work? Uh, and does the city expect uh, to make a profit of, off of this reopening or, or break even uh, with the, you know, the current revenue shortfall the city's facing? Yeah, thank you, Dustin, for the question. Uh, in order to reopen these facilities, we will be recalling back approximately 120 employees who have been temporarily laid off. Uh, that, that process started uh, over the weekend when we heard uh, news from the province. And so uh, we look forward to seeing those employees return uh, to their workplace in these recreation uh, centres. Uh, this opening is certainly not uh, driven by a, a need for profit. And uh, uh, the openings and the costs for the openings are well within our means uh, with the new budget we have uh, approved and that we're now implementing. Dustin, do you have a follow-up question? I'm good, thank you. Okay, thank you, Dustin. Uh, next, we'll go to Sarah Comedina from Global. Hi, I'm just wondering when it could be a possibility to see all of the rec centers open. I know right now there's a few, so when, when can we expect to see all of them? Uh, 
um, in terms of these openings, these are very limited openings at this point. Uh, and we're not making decisions based on timelines. We're making decisions based on conditions. So uh, this weekend we had a, an update from the health uh, department and there were some restrictions changed as a result of that science. And so we took uh, our lead from that change uh, to con consider a strategy to open up more arenas. I would also like to emphasize that this was not done on our own. We had great collaboration with many of the users of these facilities and we'll continue to work with them. Uh, and uh, so certainly Saturday, uh, we were in touch with Hockey Edmonton and worked collaboratively with them over the last couple of days to, to make sure that we're opening the right uh, facilities uh, and the right amount of facilities. And we'll continue to do, th do that based on the conditions. And when it comes to uh, how the government made its decision that it wouldn't be allowing minor sports and then changed its mind last Saturday, I'm just wondering if uh, the city is taking into account what to learn from that. I mean, we have seen this throughout the pandemic, uh, the government going back on decisions or changing its mind. And I know um, in the grand scheme of things, it didn't take too long to start reopening some arenas, but um, it, did, it did take some additional days. So I'm just wondering if there's anything to take away from that. Communication has been really good uh, with the government of Alberta at various stages of reopening. I think with the number of piece moving pieces uh, at any point in this pandemic, uh, it's it's not unexpected that there would be the odd crossed wire. But I want to emphasize that that's been the exception in in our communication with public health officials and with the, the folks at the Provincial Operations Centre and others making key calls on this. So, so I think in this case, it was easy to pivot. I think if it had been surprise, rec centres are open for everybody, then that would have been uh, a, a much more significant um, uh, challenge for us. And, and just to follow up on your previous question on that, there really are two factors. Um, so the limited opening that, that's uh, here for certain kinds of training and, and youth activity uh, where um, distancing can be maintained uh, and and safety measures can be put in place is, is quite apart from the full-scale reopening of, of rec centers for essentially workout activity or different kinds of uh, team sports or contact sports. So I think we're a ways away uh, from that kind of reopening. So that would be one factor is... Um, uh, the degree of risk in the different activities coming forward, and that's the conditions that uh, that uh, City Manager Corbold addressed. The other issue is the the financial viability for us, um, because if capacity is significantly limited, then the overheads may not justify the reopening. So we have to analyze the costs as well. It uh, it may be easier for some small and independent. Uh, gyms to pivot when that opportunity comes. Uh, they may have different uh, different operating and budget realities than the city and, and different labor considerations. So we may not be as fast when the time comes, when those conditions warrant. Uh, but uh, again, I wouldn't expect to be surprised by the government of Alberta on that. I think we'll all have a better sense of when that's coming, um, which again, uh, that's been uh, our overwhelming experience during the pandemic is is good communication uh, when these changes are coming. Again, that one issue with minor sports here uh, uh, is is the exception, not the rule. Thank you for your question, Sarah. Next, we'll go to Jeremy Thompson with CTV. Uh, hi there. I think this question uh, is mainly for the mayor, but but both of you can take a crack at it if you'd like. Um, there was some mention um, during the meeting about um, just sort of the emergence of these COVID-19 variants um, in, in the community. We, we know there are cases of them uh, in Edmonton. So how much weight um, do you give that fact uh, when considering, you know, opening the facilities that you are going to open? You know, how, much, how much are these variants on your mind as you're making these decisions? I'd say that the variants are on everybody's mind at this point, including decision makers. We understand uh, that, uh, and we asked lots of questions of Dr. Sikora about this today, uh, who's the zone officer of, of medical health for the Edmonton region. And it's very much on their minds as well. Um, and I think as long as uh, the testing regime is able to continue to screen for the variants and uh, uh, provided the contract tracing system is able to 
um, monitor the epidemiology of the variants effectively here, then we can make evidence-based decisions rather than fear-based decisions. Um, but there's no doubt that uh, for me and for everybody else, there is a lot of fear and anxiety, and that's why uh, listening to the public health officials uh, is important. Um, uh, and, and we'll continue to ask lots of questions of them about the data that they're seeing and if and when that merits uh, a change in strategy around reopening. And Jeremy, do you have a follow-up question? Uh, yeah, um, you mentioned, um, you're talking a little bit about festivals um, during the meeting as well, uh, um, specifically uh, the summer festivals, the, the big ones, um, and, and having those sort of maybe as a bit of a reward for good behavior um, uh, happening, you know, obviously based on conditions at the time. Can you explain that a bit more? What's, what's the thinking around, the, around these summer festivals? What are the hopes um, for the festivals? Yeah, certainly. So, uh, I mean, festivals are really important to the people of Edmonton and to the city and uh, just, you know, it's a part of the vibrancy here in the city. Um, but, you know, we're not going to carry on with those festivals unless they, it's safe to do so from a public health perspective. So while we, uh, we will plan for uh, doing them as best we can, we hope that we can do them, but we accept that uh, given where the vaccine is in terms of its rollout, uh, again, that's another decision that will be driven by safety and science. Uh, if we can't do a festival, then the idea is how can we collaborate and how we can work to keep that sense of the festival alive. And so we're starting to uh, discuss with partners on this other alternatives to, to uh, the main festivals and finding ways to keep the, the festival alive for this year uh, in this um, different year. So you mentioned a couple of uh, the organizations and many of the sponsors have been good about maintaining their sponsorship. Many of the philanthropists and foundations have continued to support uh, these organizations so that they can continue to plan for whenever they're able to come back and also in some cases put on some really innovative uh, online programming uh, and different kinds of static programming that people can safely visit without it becoming a mass gathering. Uh, uh, Deep Freeze up on 118th for example is doing some very cool stuff this week that allows people to pass through safely and so there may be there may be pivots like that that are still COVID safe that uh, leverage the power of the arts and and community without creating unsafe gatherings um, and that uh, keep people engaged as well in community. And so I think the point is we're very open to, to flexibility with festival organizers and adaptive use of venues to support that a continuity of these marquee festivals, even if it's a little different than what we're used to, because I know the loss of them for this last year was deeply felt in the arts community and in the broader community. Um, and so if we can support some, some different deployment, I think that that, uh, that behooves us and that's the sort of creativity that I know both our festival producers and the city are very capable of. So um, here's hoping we can have real festivals before uh, snow at the end of uh, 2021, but uh, even if they're modified, that's still better than nothing. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, next we'll go to Tandiwe Kongolavi from CBC. Uh, Tandiwe, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, but go ahead. Oh, thank you. Tandiwe is perfect. Kongolavi, not so much. Um, but I wanted to ask about uh, the the demand from user groups. What what kind of uh, demand do you have? Like, is it numbers of people that are wanting to um, to book already, or do you have any anything to give us an idea of what how much demand there is to get back in for the for the groups that are allowed? Yeah, I mean, I, I suspect after today's announcement, there'll be increased demand. Uh, we've done some assessments by talking to uh, those organizations and those partners in the communities. And so this initial opening is, is designed to meet that standard or that demand, noting that these are, there are still you know, quite a lot of restrictions involved with the use of these facilities. And so only certain amounts of people and certain groups will, will want to use them. So it's been a collaboration over the last four or five days to uh, take a real good assessment of what's required. And as I've mentioned, we've got contingency plans that if the demand increases, we'll be ready to open those as well. Again, following the COVID safe guidelines that uh, the health professionals have provided for us. So I understand there's a bit of uncertainty with that, but we are going to be very attuned to the needs of Edmontonians and making sure we, 
we follow and, and listen to the demand requirements uh, for their needs. Okay, and I also wanted to ask, um, are the restrictions the same as the provincial government? And how, how will they be monitored? Uh, like, how will the practices be monitored uh, at the city facilities? The restrictions are in line with uh, the provincial government's uh, health orders. In fact, uh, in developing our plan for opening, we worked collaboratively with uh, about Alberta Health Services and Alberta Health and confirmed our, uh, our plan that we've talked about today. So they're very consistent with the health facility, health uh, orders and health guidance. And in terms of monitoring, we'll take the responsibility of that with, uh, with the city and our recreation folks to, to make sure we're properly monitoring. The other thing I really appreciate is that the restrictions require good leadership to be in place with the groups that are coming to use the facilities, including uh, very excellent coaches uh, and parents that can help uh, with that monitoring. So we feel strongly that that, that will be uh, work out very well. Thank you for your questions, Candyway. Um, I believe the mayor uh, has to leave now, but first I'll just ask if we do have any follow-up questions. I, I've got one more if I could. Okay, um, I think the mayor, can you stay? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Jeremy. Uh, you mentioned um, calculating in sort of overhead costs um, when it comes time to, to reopen the rec centers fully. Is there a cost associated with uh, opening them to the degree that you are now? There are overheads even to them being closed. We've obviously still got heat and security and uh, building maintenance to conduct, um, obviously. And, and unfortunately, uh, when, when facilities closed originally at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, there were layoffs and some folks came back during stages of reopening, but some folks are still laid off uh, going back um, many, many months now. Um, so that is an offsetting uh, expenditure a reduction um, but uh, bringing people back on um, and then having to lay off again is also very expensive and so there's risk it's not as easy as flipping on and off a light switch for for the city um, uh, given the complexity of our organization and our, our very reasonable obligations uh, in our collective bargaining agreements with labor and um, so those are some of the factors uh, that uh, that weigh in in reactivating a facility, and and at this stage, where uh, besides uh, some of these uh, uh, group activities, um, the only other thing that's allowed would be one-on-one -on -one personal training. It's just not cost-effective at this point against all of the other things you'd have to turn on uh, to to begin to activate the rec centers. The point at which it would make sense uh, for the city to reactivate. Uh, rec centers both financially and from a mental health and public health wellness uh, standpoint, uh, I think we're still a ways away from that and it will really depend on uh, uh, on those conditions that Andre was describing earlier. Um, and, uh, and that'll be a, a carefully considered decision, uh, which again, the more lead time we have from the government of Alberta about uh, empowerment to do such things, uh, uh, the more foresight we'll be able to uh, to give to, to those activation decisions when the time comes. The cost like now for, for these openings that, that uh, you can tell us? Yeah, there's some recovery against them though, uh, as to where we'll land on cost recovery for these at this point. Uh, I don't know if that's, if we have, uh, what sort of analysis we have on that, Andre. Yeah, we, we can certainly get back to you with the details of that in terms of the cost analysis and where we're going, but uh, it was factored in for sure. Thank you. Um, just checking one last time. Any other questions today? Just a clarification. It's me, it's me again. <laughs> okay, go ahead, um, just we saw two different numbers for um, how many staff would be coming back. Um, we were told by a, a city spokesperson that roughly about 42 staff would be coming back with these with these reopenings. Um, and then Andre, you said the total number is about 120. Can you square that? Can you clarify how many staff are actually coming back? Yeah, I, I checked in just before this and I'm confident that we are recalling back approximately 120 uh, employees that are currently uh, temporarily laid off. 
and that's what we need to to uh, implement this plan we have in place. That's what we're doing. Thank you, Jeremy. If there is any other clarification, we will get back to you after the uh, avail. Um, I think that concludes our avail for today. I'd like to thank our city manager for joining us, Mayor Iveson, our interpreters, and the media for asking their questions. Uh, stay safe and have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Thank you.